What's up, Brooklyn? I'm Angela Renee Coakley, host of Be Real on BK Live, where we have real conversations with A-listers and influencers in arts, media, and entertainment. Today, we are talking lights, camera, fashion. We'll be chatting about fashion and film with the hottie that plays Tommy on the Star's hit series, Power. Welcome, Joseph Sakura. Welcome. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. And also, hip-hop's first lady of fashion and Brooklyn's own April Walker. Welcome to Be Real. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I'm so glad. I'm excited, super excited to talk to you guys. So you guys have worked together before on an interview and a cool Walker Wear photo shoot. How did that come about? So that's a funny story. I yeah. was actually watching Power, and I saw this amazing actor. And I just was like, you know, I'm real good. So little backdrop. I worked with Big Tupac, a lot of people, and see that it thing and that talent. He had and it. He just had it. He had it. And I and I was like, Dag. I I've literally woke up like I've got to do a photo shoot with him now. And then I realized I had a friend that worked on the show. Catherine Narducci. And okay, I called so that's Catherine. how that came about. Shout out to Catherine. <laughs> awesome. She brought the marriage together and, and we've been friends ever since. Ever since. Yeah. So, you've worked with a number of people, right, in fashion and music videos and things like that. Your clothes have appeared. Joseph is actually wearing something now, Walker Wear. Um, they've appeared in a number of films. How important do you think wardrobe or costuming is to a character? You both can comment. It's everything. Yeah? You know, you want to give the whole spectrum. I think it provides a backdrop of, of depth of who that person is. Agreed. So, uh, I, the way we dress defines how we feel and, and our mood and a lot of other things. So I think that uh, when you see an, a character, you can kind of sum up, oh, okay, that's their steez, that's their MO, you know, that's their flavor. So you get a lot out of it. Do you think the same thing? I do. I, you know, I think that when you put on an, um, a costume as an actor, it really helps influence that character. So I think the costume is very important. Frank Fleming, who designs this show, um, is he's really fashion forward so he's made all of the characters fashion forward i'm not as um nowhere near as fashion forward as tommy but frank if there's like a big sometimes you, i don't know if you remember and um i was wearing like this big kind of like uh ox blood long kind of like wow. king thing i was like look at that frank what am i he's like look you're wearing it so own it you and i think it. and i think that that's a big thing too with some of the things that i'm not that, that aren't me they're tommy so mm -hmm. own them as tommy mm -hmm. and that just means boom big you know shoulders back letting it swing and walking down the street so it's it's you have it's i think it's very inf influential as influential as me as myself when i wear clothes that i'm comfortable in mm. And also, that's when branding becomes something that you believe in, more than like, I don't know what this brand is about, and yet it's all over me, whatever swoop or slash or stripes you got going on. So I think that it's important that people associate their values and their fashion with brands like Walker Wear that I believe in, because I believe in April, and I believe in New York. Oh, that's sweet. And, well, it's also, it's also true, and I think that more people should do that and feel like, what is this? What is this label that I'm putting on myself all about? I feel more proud about wearing Walker wear than any other gear. I love that Thank too. you, Joe. <laughs> so it seems like for Tommy and for Ghost, a hoodie is like essential to their character's wardrobe. What's your, Joseph will ask you first, what's your one essential like piece of attire, your go-to piece? I'm not too far away from a hoodie. I mean, <laughs> a, a hoodie's a, a hoodie. Is that a hoodie? <laughs> Let me just put this on. Yeah, I mean, I like I like a hoodie, something comfortable. I'm definitely into comfort. Um, I'm, I'm a jeans, I'm a jeans and t-shirt kind of guy, so that's what I feel comfortable in. So that's what I typically wear. But I, I don't mind going a little bit more fashion forward okay. these days because. I can actually pay my bills for the first time in my hey. life, and so maybe I can buy clothes. Hey. But then when you put that on the list, you know, it, it, it edges up. I don't have the fashion sense that this one does. Speaking of your fashion sense, what's your one essential piece of attire you have to have? Honestly, sweats. <laughs> <laughs> you see me today, I but you know, when I'm, when I'm <clears throat> home and, or when I'm just on my grind, I mean, I sweats. love to be comfortable. Yeah. That makes sense. So. What was your biggest fashion faux pas? Like, the fashion police would absolutely give you a ticket. Joseph. 
You know, I, I don't take a whole lot of risks, so I probably haven't had a ton of fashion faux pas. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can't even think of anything. Oh, you want to hear something funny? Tell I was going in to go uh, to the bottling, um, to the bottling of plant of Pepsi, right? Okay. Uh, in, in Chicago, and I wore a Coke shirt. Ooh, ouch! <laughs> That's probably my biggest fashion faux pas. Okay, yeah, that Ticket. was a good one. Ticket. <laughs> what about you, April? What was your biggest fashion faux pas? So one time I had to go to a wedding. And this is years and years and years ago. Okay. And I was too cheap to go to get it colored, and I tried to color my hair, and it came out orange. Ooh. Ronald McDonald. <laughs> 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 and it was a few days before the wedding, and you Did have to wait like down? a week before you can dye it again. Oh, so it fall out, huh? Yeah. So Ooh. I had to go with this big, bright Ronald McDonald orange Ooh. hair to the wedding, oh. and that was. That, I still have pictures. That's okay. We absolutely know that you're fly. So, <laughs> in your opinion, Joseph, we'll go with you. Who's um, the best dressed man in Hollywood, in your opinion? It could be your, you know, co star or whatever. Um, no, <laughs> I'm listen, just I, kidding. I, I don't yeah, want to yeah, egg you on. But you know who actually has a great fashion sense? Rotimi Akinosho, who plays Dre ah, on the show. Okay. In real life, this guy okay. wears stuff. Mm -hmm. He also has shoulders like a, a linebacker. I mean, okay. it's not huge in stature, but his shoulders, yeah, li a... his, lo his, I literally could stand behind him, go like this, you, you couldn't see, see me. Okay. And he also wears these things that accentuate that. He's got, that guy's got a great fashion sense, but like, like big time, super huge guys rocking stuff. Um, I think the rock always looks good. True, true that. April, who do you think the best dressed man in Hollywood is? I would have to say this guy named Joseph Sikora. Oh, get him. Ah! I love Every now, every now and again, <laughs> I wear stuff. something right. Okay, you get it right. It. Okay. All right, so we have a clip, you know. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to show the clip, and then we're going to come back and talk, what, talk about what's new for both of you. Sounds All good. right? All right, let's get it. Welcome to the first table read of season four. This is Jackson, executive producer, Canadian marketing. <laughs> I'm Amari Hardwick. Welcome to season four. What's up? It's your girl, Naturi Nong, a.k.a. Tasha. Hey, it's Leela. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Joseph Shakora, a.k.a. Thomas Patrick Egan. Okay, so I'm excited about season four. That's shot in Steiner Studios here in Brooklyn, yeah? Yeah. Awesome. So, wait. And on location. I'm mostly on location. Oh, okay. Is there anything you can tell us new that's happening with season four? Now, rumor, yeah. ha rumor has it that Charlie Murphy is part of the cast now, or at least making some appearances. Darkness. What, what, darkness. <laughs> tell us about it. <laughs> uh, what can you spill? Well, he plays an integral role. Um, he is as bad as it comes. Charlie Murphy does a fantastic job of exposing his inner demons on, uh, I would say on film, but um, on video. Um, really high def video, but yeah, Charlie Murphy does a, an amazing job, um, and he, his his dealings are primarily with Omari Hardwick's character. Oh, okay. That much I can tell. Okay. All right. Well, all right. April, you have something new. You want to talk about it? Your new book, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Tell us about it. It's called Walker Gems. Get your ass off the couch. Oh, exciting! I'm so excited about it because I just am really about. Um, helping people see their dreams and their passion pursuit, on that passion pursuit. And um, I think too many of us <coughs> exist instead of insist on what we really want to do, that purpose and passion in each of us, if we see it through. There's so many people in the graves right now that have riches inside mm -hmm. of them, that have mm -hmm. never lived while they were here. And that's the most heartbreaking thing for me. So just, just for you to follow, whatever that passion is, I want to get you up off the couch and have you face that fear and keep going. Lazy hey. geniuses, that's what we use. Oh, I yep. love that, though. I'm looking forward yep. to more of that. Now, here's the fun part. That's what I call the Be Real Rundown, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so it's a t we're filling a time capsule. We're going to fill it with three things, all right? Favorite article of clothing, film, and then your theme song. Who's going first? Joseph. Okay. Okay. Since I was <clears throat> called upon. Okay. <laughs> uh, my favorite article of clothing um, would be my pork pie hat, my cut fedora, oh, turned into a pork cool. pie from the time, from when I was 15 years old, I've had this thing. I went down and then I got it fitted on the west side of Chicago with my mother, 
in the back of this little hat shop, but I love that hat. And then what's the next one? Film. Your Favorite film? The first thing that came to mind, literally, is Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels by Guy Ritchie, circa 1998. Wow. That's that what came out. One. It's just, uh, it's my era. It's like, you know, okay. I was on top of the world. Uh, that was it. And then third is the... Yeah, theme song. My theme is Let the Rhythm Hit Him, Eric B. and Rock Eric... Never mind a boy from Long Island. Okay, April. That's Time capsule. with the music. Article of clothing, your favorite film, and your theme song. Hmm. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go with a good old faithful walk wear hoodie. I'm gonna go with mahogany. Oh, yes. <laughs> Diana yes. in the house. Diana, her wardrobe was unbelievable <laughs> yes. in that film. Slay. And I am going to say Marvin Gaye. Mm. I'm going to be with what's going on. on. I like it, I like it. Thank you guys for sharing. Somebody was just here. saying that on the three train yesterday for on us, my way back from Harlem. The universe was just right. Same, exactly. Same. Same. Right. You know? Good. Gotta I listen. Think, I thank there you, you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank okay. you for having us. It's been real, Brooklyn. Thank you to our guest, Joseph Pecora, and my girl, April Walker, and thank you for watching Be Real on BK Live.